Hello. This module refreshes your memory of fundamental chemistry concepts that were introduced in high school chemistry. You are expected to know this material and bring this knowledge into Chem 10X. A colleague of mine, Mark Bishop, has a free introductory electronic textbook that may assist you in recalling or relearning this information. His website is preparatorychemistry.com. I must mention that this is not the only review you will get. There will be just-in-time reviews at the beginning of several chapters in Chem 10X. For example, the bonding and gases chapter in Chem 101 and the thermodynamics and electrochemistry chapters in Chem 102. These are the sections of Chapter 1 that we'll be, we will be covering. You are expected to know all of the subsections of Chapter 1. This presentation briefly reviews this material and quickly moves to applications. So to begin, let us review the basics of the metric system. The base quantities of the metric system are listed here. Please pause this presentation and write down the SI units for each of these base quantities. Okay, the units of mass are kilograms, length is reported in meters, time is reported in seconds, temperature is reported in Kelvin, electric current is reported in amps, luminosity is reported in candela, an amount of substance is reported in moles. The ones that are commonly used in chemistry are mass, length, time, temperature, and amount of substance. Now let's look at the order of magnitude prefixes of the metric system. Please pause this presentation and write down the prefixes for the order of magnitude prefixes from 10 to the minus 1 to 10 to the minus 12, and from 10 to the 1 to 10 to the 12. The SI prefixes less than 1 are listed here. The ones that are commonly used in chemistry are centi, milli, micro, nano, and pico. The SI prefixes greater than one are listed here. The ones that are commonly used in chemistry are kilo and mega. However, kilo, mega, giga, and tera are common in society. Just think about your computer with megabytes, gigabytes, and terabytes of RAM, plus megahertz and gigahertz processors. This question might be intuitively obvious. However, I would like you to tell me which number is larger, 2020, 3.14, or 0 0.0218. In fact, this question can't be answered. Without the units, it is impossible to compare these numbers. If the numbers represent the area of the rectangle and have the units as shown, then the numbers are actually all equivalent. 2020 millimeters squared, is equal to 3.14 inches squared is equal to 0 0.0218 feet squared. Before I show the conversion between these values, I would like you to think about your high school science classes and whether you predominantly used a formula sheet or used dimensional analysis, which is sometimes called unit analysis. This course and all of your university science courses will endeavor to get you to use dimensional analysis. 
dimensional analysis is a more robust strategy and doesn't require you to memorize hundreds of formulae. In the conversion that we're doing here, we need an equality that relates the units. For this problem, one inch equals 25.4 millimeters and one foot equals 12 inches. For reference, I do expect you to know all the metric conversion factors, but I will give you any required non-metric conversion factors. So to convert from millimeters squared to inches squared, we start off with 2020 millimeters squared. I gave the conversion factor earlier. The conversion factor is for one inch is equal to 25.4 millimeters. And we need to now come up with a set of conversion factors. If we divide through by 25.4, we end up with one inch over 25.4 millimeters is equal to one. And that is equal to 25.4 millimeters over one inch. These are the two conversion factors that come from the equality one inch equals 25.4 millimeters. Now which conversion factor do we want? We have units of millimeters squared. We want units of inches. So ultimately we want to cancel out millimeters squared and the conversion factor that does that is the one on the left. So applying that conversion factor, we have one inch millimeters. Note that we have millimeters squared in the problem and only millimeters in our conversion factor. So we actually need to square this entire thing. So now this leaves with millimeters squared and inches squared. And when we substitute these numbers into a calculator, we find out that this equals 3.14 inches squared. I would like you to pause this presentation now and confirm that 3.14 inches squared is equal to 0 0.0218 feet squared. The equality you're going to need is that one foot is equal to 12 inches. Formally, what we just did is called dimensional analysis. And here is the underlying mathematics. We have two things that are equal. F is equal to F primed. We can rearrange these into two fractions that are both equal to one. Converting between different units is the same as multiplying through by one. Now we're going to look at example A, where the equality we have is that one cubic centimeter of copper equals 8.96 grams of copper. So we have the equality that 1.00 cubic centimeters of copper is equal to 8.96 grams of copper. This equality applies only to copper. A different equality exists for lead, gold, carbon, and every other chemical entity. So now to set up these equalities, we divide through by 8.96 grams of copper. And we have 8.96. When we divide through both sides by 8.96 grams of copper, that's what's on the left. And on the right, we end up with 1. And now we can go through and divide through by one cubic centimeter of copper. On the left, we will have one. And what this equals is 0.0. that ratio there. Now, looking at these ratios, does either of them look familiar? 
the one on the right has units of grams per cubic centimeter. This is the density. Very specifically, it is the density of copper. Density is reported in grams per cubic centimeter. In fact, the density is what is commonly tabulated. And from the density, we are able to un extract the underlying equality. If you think back to what you did in high school, sometimes you multiplied by the density and sometimes you divided by the density. This is nothing more than applying one of these conversion factors to a problem you are working on. We determine what to do not by memorizing formulae, but by looking at the units and determining which ratio to use. Please pause this presentation now and complete the same analysis for the second equality. One of the conversion factors should be familiar to you. So here is another question. What does 12.2 grams represent? Please pause this presentation and write down an answer. If you became confused trying to write the, this answer, this is good. Writing 12.2 grams doesn't mean much more than writing 12.2. If you were in a lab and were told to add 12.2 grams, you should be asking, of what? You must specify what is being referred to. It is always moles of something, grams of something, volume of something. However, I must admit that as chemists, you will sometimes see simplifications like 12.2 grams. This is only acceptable if it is obvious what entity this measurement refers to. You've probably started doing this in high school, which is fine, but you need to be sure that whoever is reading your report or your exam isn't confused by your simplification. Imagine being a physician and writing a prescription for 400 milligrams. Of what? It is your responsibility to be clear in the documents you prepare. Here is a quick assessment for you. Please pause this presentation and determine which equality is correct. You should have calculated that one cubic centimeter is equal to 10 to the minus six cubic meters. If you did not realize that it is one meter that is equal to 100 centimeters. And that you need to cube this relationship to convert from cubic centimeters to cubic meters.